the Canaanite worship. And he put a name on it. It was called the Muslim faith or the faith of Islam. But it's still the spirits of this region. Y'all still with me? And there was much intrigue. Intrigue, however you want to pronounce it. And there were factions that began to fight. And there was much animosity that began to develop. At this time, their wars were with each other. Because Israel was not in that region. The Jewish people were scattered all over the earth. Here's something for you to contemplate right now. Most of you think right here in America, in America there's close to 370 million people in this country right now that consider themselves American. In the nation of China, there's some 1.7 billion, I think, maybe 2 billion now, maybe over 2 billion. In India, India is fast approaching 2 billion people of the Indian people. At one time, all of India, at one time, all of Iran, at one time, all of Iraq, at one time, all of Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Israel, Egypt, and other nations were part of the Persian kingdom. It was the largest empire of the earth at that time. The seedbed of that comes from the area from which God called Abraham. The land of Ur, the city of Ur, which is right in the middle of that. And God tells him, get out of this country. I'm going to give you your own land. Some of you should learn some of this stuff. Those that don't know history, sadly, are destined to repeat history. <clears throat> and so we see here this massive nation that or not just a nation, an empire that Satan the spirit of Persia the prince of Persia is trying to withstand Daniel all of what you read this is the, what, what do you say the third year of Darius the king This is late into the kingdom. And this is after the children of Israel have already been sent back to occupy Jerusalem. Yeah, third year of Cyrus. That's who I'm trying to think of. This is the time of Esther. and This is the time of Nehemiah, this is the time of Zerubbabel. Most of you don't think of this. Daniel is an old man. And he has been in captivity for many years. And he has fought these spirits for many years. Until finally God gives him direction. And he begins to write this direction down. And he begins to show us some of the tactics of the way that the enemy opposes us. Now we have the Holy Ghost today. 
So we don't fight like they did in the old days against people. We fight against spirits. But remember, spirits manipulate people. And for those of you today that don't realize what's going on in the Middle East, let me explain some of that to you. Because it has been portrayed that America was founded on a separation of the church and the state, which is true to a certain extent. But there is nothing in the Constitution that divides our belief from our nation. It's not there. We know that America was a Christian nation. We know that the founders established most of our law. is established out of the law of God. Now we have judges that are judging according to Buddhism. Their value system is Buddhism. Their value system is atheism. And there's, their value system is Hinduism. I'm not knocking these people. But I want to tell you that there's no greater system of judgment than Jesus Christ. I openly and unabashedly and unashamedly tell you that. Because it has the faction of mercy in it. It has the faction of forgiveness in it. It has the faction of redemption in it. Which is massive because no other God in Buddhism, no other God in Hinduism, no other God in any other kind of pagan religion came and gave his life to redeem humanity. Not even close, not one. So when you want to talk about, Brother Elder, why do you preach like this? Because it's my job as a preacher to bring to you what you are fighting in this spirit. That's why I tell you. Don't get in trouble with the law. That's not a good old Christian judge that you're going to be talking to. I'm not knocking judges. I respect them. I honor them. But I want to tell you, if you will live for God, the Bible says that He is the one that will judge the living and the dead. And so you have this whole faction that is going on. That is born out of, you have this battle that's going on in the Middle East. Of these same old spirits. Because eventually, they quit fighting each other. And in 1948, God gave the people that rightly owned that land back their land. Brother Elder, you're touching a political... I'm not touching a political anything. I'm telling you what the Word of God promised. Some of you that have a little bit idea of, of biblical knowledge and you've studied a lot of the commentaries. If you had commentaries that were written in the 1800s, remember those commentaries were written and there was no Israel there. While they were writing those commentaries, the nation of Israel was not there. So they tried to make Israel an allegory. And you still have a lot of preaching today that is allegorical preaching that was was brought to us from the time of the Reformation and from the time of evangelicals and the time of the Restoration and the Second Reformation and all of this. And if you're listening online and you're watching this online, a lot of the preaching that you hear today is still allegorical. That's why they want to take the gospel message and make it allegorical. That's why they want to tell you that the book of Acts is not apropos to doctrine. That's a bunch of baloney. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. And we know how to preach the gospel because we had Peter who was given the keys to the kingdom of heaven on the day of Pentecost that preached the gospel and he taught us how to preach the gospel and we're still preaching the gospel while there are many people that call themselves Christian churches that are not preaching the Christian gospel. They're preaching a pagan gospel with Christian names on it. And God give us prophets that will stand up and preach to you and challenge the American people and whoever else. Go back to the Bible. 
and realize that there are spirits that you're dealing with that's been around for a long time. I don't know how much more authentic you can get in preaching the gospel than preaching what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. You say, well, what about this stuff they've been saying that if thou wilt confess in thy mouth and believe in thine heart? Peter did not preach that on the day of Pentecost. Some reformationists 1,100 years later come up with that. Go check me out. Don't take my word for it. Hey, look, brothers and sisters, I teach college. This is what I teach in college. I've been doing this for 40 years. I've been reading this stuff for 40 years. I can't find anywhere. I can't find a historian that will agree with these reformationists and these evangelicals. A historian won't agree with them. The only ones that will agree with them is their echo chamber buddies that preach the same gospel. But if you get a historian, they'll all tell you that the original formula of baptism was in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Just like Peter preached it on the day of Pentecost. So why are they baptizing in the titles Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Because they're part of their Catholic upbringing. They're still... They are still connected to the church that preaches it falsely. No offense to you Catholics if you're here. I'm just telling you what they're preaching is wrong. I love you. Not mad at you. I'll go have coffee with you. We'll sit down and read and talk about it. Or we'll talk about fishing. I don't care. But I'll tell you this. I'm not going to lie when it comes to the word of God. Because Jesus said this. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If we're going to see these people set free from these addictions and these and these bondages and all this stuff, we got to quit playing church, and we go to we got to get back to preaching what Jesus said will work. We got to get back to preaching what Jesus said for this cause came I into this world. How many believe that if we'll preach the truth? That God will set them free. He will make them free. Brother Richard, come to the music. I'm not near done. I told you I can't get all this. I got 15 strings out here. I'm trying to attach them. What you see going on in Israel today is not religion. It's not even the Muslim religion. It is the fighting between the factions of the Muslim. Israel was attacked by Hamas. Hamas. Hamas is a Sunni faction of the Muslim faith that have their original... Their origin, they go back to uh, Shiite, Sunni, the fighting between the two factions. I don't have time to get into all of that. But really it goes deeper than that because they're not even practicing the Shiite belief system. It is a Loose alliance with another group called Hezbollah. Hezbollah is Shiite. Hezbollah has direct connections to the Khomeini in Iran, who is the guru of the Shiite faith that actually ousted the Sunni power faction when the Shah was kicked out of Iran, I don't know how many years ago. 70s. The Shiites have their origin in another faction that started about 1071 AD when they, there were three guys, I can't pronounce their names, they made a pact together that they would be in alliance, that they would have such a friendship that they felt like that one of them would. Uh, take over the 
Oh, my mind slips. I should have wrote this down this morning. Anyway, it was a kingdom at that time. One of them did become the emperor of that empire. One of them asked for a pension from him just to continue his studies of science and physics. It wasn't the Ottomans. It was Sejunk or something like that. It was right there where Barbarossa. Anybody read this in history? I didn't think you did. But anyway, I was trying. And, and he became the emperor. The other one was in his court as a counselor. But there was immediate intrigue between these two friends. And so this one was driven away. This was all Shiite. And he was driven into the desert. His place became the fortress of Alamut. I think it is somewhere near Turkey and, and uh, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, that area. Y'all bored with this? Good. Neither am I. I want to know what's going on. So in this fortress, he began to gather warriors. And he vowed that he would kill the man that drove him out of the kingdom. And he did. But he began a system of gathering these desert veteran young men. And he would bring them into this fortress. And it was said been recorded historically but I don't know if it's true but it was said historically that he had a secret garden in this fortress hideout it was a robber's roost initially and he would bring these Bedouin kids into this garden and in this garden was the most lush fruit the greatest fruit trees they said that they had. They had created a, a conduit system where there were fountains that were actually spraying milk. And they, it was just the absolute picture of luxury. They would seize the beautiful women from all over the world, they would kidnap them and bring them into this garden. They were the most sensuous, beautiful women. And they would bring these poor Bedouins, boys. And before they took them into this garden, they would dope them up on hashish. How many of you know what hashish is? It's like marijuana. They would dope them up on hashish and they would take them in this garden. And they would let them live in this opulent, decadent, sensual, perverted lifestyle of just of assuaging every appetite that their human mind could think of for a few days. And then they would take them back out and put them in the service of this, this man that aspired political power. And he used murder to get his ways. And these men were commissioned to do certain things. And before they were sent out, they were doped up on hashish again. And they were told that if they died in the service of fulfilling this murder, that they would be translated back into this garden. Hence you have... The idea that when a Muslim dies, he gets 50 virgins in paradise. I heard a story about that one time. One of them died, went to paradise, and he got beat up by Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, and several other of our guys just beat the fire out of him. And they said, what on earth 
is this paradise? And they said, yes. And he said, well, I thought there was supposed to be 50 virgins. He said, no, you misrepresented. 50 Virginians. <laughs> Just thought it don't have anything to do with this message right now. But <laughs> that is not scriptural. Please strike that from the books. But you get the idea that they associate perversion, immorality with paradise. They associate murder with virtue. This is not religious at all. It's satanic. They became so feared that they were known as Hashishans. Those that are duped up on Hashish, the Hashishans are after you. We changed the name to assassins. And that's the form of their political power is to kill and to murder. And that's the root of that. That's the root of that whole spirit. They're, they're not after land, brothers and sisters. They're being used by the devil to destroy God's people. And some of you that think this is a political fight better wake up because they're not satisfied with taking out Israel. The spirit in them wants to take out God's lineage. They hate anything that is of God. Now there's good people among them. There are actually good people that they have taken hostage. Benjamin Naughton, you said it like this. He said, we use missiles to protect our women and children. But he said, they use their women and children to protect their missiles. We're living in the last days, brothers and sisters. And Satan is unleashed in this earth. And the Bible says that he knows that he hath but a short time. And he has come down with great wrath. And some of us, we're living in America and we think it doesn't bother us. It bothers us. Brother Kelly Nix's father and his brother Keith are in Jerusalem right now. And they can't get out. Because no airplanes can fly out of Tel Aviv. Because they're surface-to-air missiles. That's your brother. There are brothers and our sisters that are over there. It is said of the Israel airline, I can't remember the name of the airline, that they have become so targeted that when their jets take off from Tel Aviv, that they are shooting flares behind their jets like our military uh, uh, our military jets shoot behind them to keep missiles from hitting them. And there are people in security, on national security in America that are talking about making a law that all of the jets, the commercial jets in America, do that now because that spirit of hatred is running rampant in the world. And some of us are still playing church. We're still just coming to church and making everybody think we're okay and we're not ready to meet God. And if I took it further, if I went to the eschatological side of this and talk about every army of the world is ramping up, who is Syria's ally, Russia and China? And what's the battle of Gog and Magog? It's an eastern fight. And they're all over there right now, but we're just patty caking for Jesus and talk to people on the street. Yeah, I'm ready to meet God, and our life is so full of sin, so full of disobedience to the Word of God. And we found all kinds of preachers that will sing us lullabies. They'll preach us lullabies. We'll make, they'll make us feel good. We don't have the Holy Ghost. We're not ready to meet God. We haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. We're not ready to meet God. There's sin in our life that we're still making excuses for. Instead of coming to an altar and repenting over it, we're still making. And all of this is going on. And the Bible says, that, and while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. But the Holy Ghost is moving 
something in my heart telling me to preach and plead with you. If you're watching this online or if you're in this building this morning or if you're listening to this, uh, somehow or another would the Holy Ghost get a hold of our hearts and shake us out of this lethargy somewhere or another God. What do they call that shot that they give somebody that's ODing? Is that a Narcon or what? Narcan? Some of us need a Holy Ghost Narcan. We are tripping right now. We are so tripping on our our materialism. We are so tripping on our social media. We are so tripping on this stuff. And I'm praying, God, let it start with me. Get a hold of my heart, God. Get a, you say, Brother Elder, is this it? I don't know if this is it, but they're all over there right now. And if it's not it, the Bible saw, the Bible says that the earth groaneth in expectation. You know what that means? That means mama is having, she's having contractions that may not be when the baby comes but that's telling you the baby's coming the earth groaneth in expectation I don't know if this is it or not but I do know that the Holy Ghost is saying come on church we gotta have revival come on youth group come on young people of Pueblo come on married couples of Pueblo Come on, families of Christian Grove Center. It's time to pray like we've never prayed before. It's time to believe God for revival. It's time to fight against the sin in our life. Maybe you've grown relaxed because you got a good job and you got good food and you're comfortable. Well, I'm praying that God shakes us out of our comfort and wakes us up and says, okay, it's time to go back to having revival. So they don't, they don't like the word assassin. They don't like that word assassin. So they put a religious spin on it. And now they're called jihad. This is a holy war. It's not a holy war. It's a war of murder and rape. Yeah, that's the side. This filthy, perverted media is not telling you. Those hostages that were taken were raped. Because that's the first thing they do with them. That's part of the jihad. That's part of the assassin mentality. That's been a part of that faction forever. What are you saying, Brother Elder? I'm saying we better have revival. I'm saying some of you, you, you know, you're really cool. Let, let me talk to some of us. Some of us have created a cult of studying eschatology. Sounds like a military jet right there. Thank you, Lord. Great timing. I'm, I'm finished. Brother Elder, how much of this do we have to put up with? Have you realized that the world will never return to what you want it to be? Have you realized that? All of you that keep, you want your, you want your little house with the gables and the white picket fence. You want the American of the 50s and 60s and 70s. But I'm telling you, it's gone. I want it too. I want it so bad. I keep voting for people that I think will bring it back. But you know something? God's coming. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming. I think I'm changing my vision from the American dream to the, the vision that John saw on the Lord's day. He said I was caught up in the spirit. And he said I saw a vision. God help me replace the American dream. With the vision of John. 
I got to get ready. The new Jerusalem is coming. I got to get my children ready. Hey, mama, are your children baptized in Jesus' name? Why aren't your children baptized in Jesus' name, mama? Hey, daddy, are your kids baptized in Jesus' name? Why aren't your kids baptized in Jesus' name? Do your children have the Holy Ghost? Why, why is that not the greatest prayer you can have right now? God, I want my children to go to heaven with me. God, I want, do you realize that we're not going to heaven if we're not baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost? I don't care what any preacher in this city told you. That's the word of God. Somewhere or another, God, help me, inspire me to get that in the hearts of the people of this city. They're not going to heaven if they're not baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Quit letting the devil lie to you. Quit letting false prophets talk you in to being a part of the the destruction of your children. I drove by churches today that were full of cars. And I prayed and I said, I wonder if they'll hear Acts 2.38 in that church today. I wonder if they'll hear Acts 2.38 in that church today. I wonder if they'll hear Acts 2.38 in that church. I wonder if this church will have an altar service and give people a chance to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. God, let every pastor in this city see this, this message right here. Come on, come on, preacher. Does your comfort and your status mean so much to you that you won't preach to the people that sit in front of you the truth of the Word of God? You can't tell me you've spent any time in the Bible and you can't see that truth. If you spend any time in in the Bible at all, you will know that's the message that started Christianity. That's the message that's going to save Christianity. And that's the message that's going to get Christianity out of this earth in the rapture. Let's stand. Will you help me pray right now? Will you help me pray right now, church? Will you help me pray right now? These spirits that are standing in opposition. But I'm praying, God, you bring them down. The spirits of compromise. The spirit that is is at ease in Zion. Spirits that want to compromise. Spirits of false doctrine. Spirits of Christianity intermingling with demonic spirits. Preaching doctrines of devils as doctrines of Christ. God, we need revival in Pueblo. We need revival, oh God. We need revival. We need revival, Jesus.
I need some people that know how to call on the name of Jesus. Some men that know how to call on the name of Jesus. Come on. Listen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, don't let the devil talk you into staying back there. Don't let the devil talk you into disregarding the drawing of the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. <laughs> Saints of God, be sensitive to God right now. Be sensitive right now. Be sensitive right now. Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost, come on up to this altar. The Lord will fill you today. If you need baptized in the name of Jesus, he'll fill you. We can baptize you in the name of Jesus today. Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray, everybody. Let's pray. Let's talk to God. Let's talk to God. Maybe you've never been in an altar call before. It's just coming and praying and talking with the Lord. Pray a prayer of repentance, God. You know the sin in my life. Things, God, that contrary to your word. The things that you bother you, that struggle you. God, I need deliverance over these addictions. I need deliverance, oh God. I need the Holy Ghost, God. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you and I praise you, God.
Come on, don't let the devil tell you you're okay. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, that's the Spirit of Christ. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. In the name of Jesus, in the name, come on church, let's pray till God gives us a breakthrough. Let's pray till God gives us a breakthrough. Let's pray. Come on, saints of God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. church God's still moving in this order come on yes Jesus is moving in this altar. The Holy Ghost is moving in this altar. This is what it's all about, brothers and sisters. saint of God and you're full of the Holy Ghost your hands ought to be lifted up right now you ought to feel the spirit of intercession and victory in this altar right now come on Christian girl sinner this is what it's all about He's getting the Holy Ghost right now. Come on. Come on. God's filling him with the Holy Ghost right now. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> yes, Jesus. Shut 
Rama. Come on. Somebody else want it? You can have the Holy Ghost right now. Someone else need it? You can have the Holy Ghost right now.
for all eternity above all else. Let's all stand and let's give God a praise for what's been done already in this house today. Come on, let's praise Him. Thank you, Jesus, for the moving of the Holy Ghost on this altar. Thank you, Jesus, for the moving of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the waters of baptism stirred today, oh God. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Come on, come on, come on. The angels of God are rejoicing over those that have received the Holy Ghost today. We ought to rejoice. God is shouting in heaven today over that one that is baptized. We ought to rejoice. that are praying, you are welcome to pray as long as you want. Spanish outreach at 2.30 this afternoon. Choir practice at 4.30. Prayer. Hey, brothers and sisters, prayer. Right over here in the prayer room. I know some of you are coming and sitting in here, but we highly encourage you, go pray with us. Let's pray the heavenly down tonight. Prayer at 5.30, service at 6. God bless you. Please be mindful of those that are still praying.